Greetings, new recruits. We're putting this video together in case uh, you sort of get a chance to go through the tutorial but are looking for a great place to start. Because uh, with all of the different missions, all of the different captains, all of the different bots, it can be a little overbearing to sort of understand like, all right, what is a good starter mission? What's a good starter bot? Um, and how to try and avoid any of those early game uh, anti-synergies, where if you might pick a bot that's really not suited for a specific mission or something like that. So if you've just finished the tutorial uh, and are looking to jump right in, you of course can always take the tutorial and like continue on playing through the rest of that. But if you're maybe looking on being like, okay, you know, we're, we've understood the basics, but we want to try and jump in a new mission right from the get-go. So I have a few different options that I personally would recommend as great starting missions. Um, of course, there is Mega Market Sweep, which is the one we use for the tutorial, so you can always do that one. Um, and then just start it from the beginning with your own selection of bots, captains, however you'd like to modify it. So we do have three different missions we usually like to recommend, uh, and they are at different floor counts. So if you're looking on just doing a one floor mission, if you think you want to maybe try with a two floor, or even if you're ready to go, jumping right into a three floor mission, we have a few different ones uh, to choose from. So the three missions I have selected as pretty solid starter missions. Uh, for Need Chain, this is gonna be the floor one mission. We have Terminal Viscosity. This is one where you have to sort of try and uh, navigate the first floor of Need Chain and actually like repair these terminals. But while you're repairing them, you're sort of uploading uh, the bot's own 404 like software to try and make sure they have a uh, influence on Need Chain's systems. For the two floor, we have Ocularity Dial-Up. This is a network heavy mission where you actually have uh, control over four different IPs. Even if you're playing solo, you get full control of the network um, and the missions are all about trying to get your IPs onto different layers of the network with different network levels, um, all still while navigating the actual map of Ocularity. So that is the two floor one. And then for the floor three, we have Salita Mission Operation Overload. Now this one can be pretty exciting, especially because the final step of this mission is actually regarding shutting down the captain. So most of the time when you're inter interacting with the captain, it's sort of like, okay, we want to try and stay away, because that's a pretty nasty guy. Uh, but this one, you're actually tasked with shutting it down. Of course, the mission does give you some ways to sort of help you out with this. There's actually a ongoing mechanic that lets you sort of farm power at the cost of threat if you're in certain locations, which can be really good about building up those dice pools. So depending on which of these missions you'd want to jump into, um, sort of like how long of a game are you looking to do? So once again, one floor missions are typically gonna be shorter than two and three floor. Um, as far as what captain goes, now the actual rules as written tell you to draw a random captain, but as you're just getting started, we highly recommend you uh, sort of waive that randomness and just choose which one uh, you want to go up against. Um, our biggest recommendation for early players is to go up against Crucible. Um, Crucible's burn cycle chip is definitely one of the ones you can most account for. Uh, you can plan around it, you understand exactly what's gonna happen. It's not gonna be too oppressive. Uh, once Crucible shows up, up himself, he does have a bit of some nasty abilities, including things that force you to either degrade the burn cycle when you're attacked or lose mods or equipment. But for the most part, he is definitely one of the more manageable captains for early players. So we definitely recommend using Crucible instead of drawing one at random. However, if you are feeling confident and you're eager and you want a you want the game to really challenge you from the get-go. Uh, we do actually have a few captain recommendations as well. If you want to forego the randomness, but really dive deep into having the game sort of put you to the test. Um, as far as captains go, we recommend for these missions in particular, so if you're playing terminal viscosity, you're gonna actually have to use the repair action to repair the terminals you're trying to fix and then uh, take, and that does require power to actively use. So if you're looking for a captain to really you know, put on the pressure uh, for this mission, we would recommend Zuck. So he actually uh, has his burn cycle chip causes you to lose power. So not only are you gonna be losing power by completing these objectives, but his burn cycle chip is also gonna be putting pressure on your power banks as well. So if you're looking for a really nasty combination of mission and captain, uh, terminal viscosity, we recommend him. For dial-up, with dial-up being a network-heavy one, 
if you were looking for a challenging captain for this one, uh, we recommend Lattice Work. Lattice Work's burn cycle action is rolling that ping die, so that's a lot more opportunities for more pings to be added to the network, increasing the network level of the CEO as well. Um, also, once she actually comes up onto the board, uh, she also has a way of getting the captain chip back into the burn cycle. So even if you've been really lucky getting it degraded throughout the game, she might be able to bring it back. And once again, that's going to cause the ping die to get rolled more and more. And then lastly, for uh, overload, uh, if you're looking for another challenging captain, we have Stamp. So there's a few other captains too that might be good for this because some captains have like a durability of 30, which of course, with your goal being to shut down the captain, that's gonna be pretty nasty. But what's interesting about Stamp is she has uh, some armor that actually prevents you from using basic action dice from attacking her. So this is going to be all about like, okay, we gotta make sure our advance and elite dice pools are buffed up, but on top of that, her burn cycle action is going to cause you to remove the highest level action die from your supply. So it's a bit of a tricky situation where it's like, all right, we have to get more of these upgraded dice, but that burn cycle chip is gonna take them away from us. Um, so those are some recommendations. If you're really itching to have a nice hard challenge right from the start, um, those can be some captains to really make those uh, first missions a bit trickier. Also, if you are a veteran player and are just watching this, um, might be a fun idea to try and spice up the next mission you go on. Choose one of these missions and take one of these captains that sort of pairs pretty nastily with them. Um, but beyond that though, otherwise, definitely recommend Crucible is usually gonna be a good pick for a starter captain, especially for these three missions. There's nothing about them where Crucible is necessarily going to cause any substantial trouble. Now, of course, the most important part is every time you go on a mission, you gotta select your bots, right? Um, now, the tutorial ha introduces you to both access and byte as agents with bit as the command module. All of these are perfectly solid options. There was a reason we put them in the tutorial. Um, with bit as an agent though, there is a little bit of an additional complexity with her lift die, so we typically don't recommend using her if you're just getting started. So as far as its agents, we recommend players start with. Of course, you can't go wrong with the ones in the tutorial with access and bite. Um, access giving great benefits to terminals and sort of helping you maintain control of the network with IP spoof, and then bite being one of the stellar stealth bots in the game. So she's really great at making a stealthy entry and she can even avoid detection during movement. And then she has just one of the most consistent innate abilities that you can pretty much use every single turn uh, with Tumble Magnet, where she can change one of the dice she rolls to match another die she rolled. So both great if you're just looking to get started. Um, on top of that, as far as the other bots go, we also like to recommend Processor. So Processor really highlights the importance of optimization. His innate ability lets you optimize an action even if you are not on that chip in the burn cycle. It is a once per turn though, so you can't keep using it. But it really opens up sort of the function of optimization in general, um, which is going to be really, really important to learn if you're trying to get the most out of the burn cycle. So sort of gives you a nice starting point um, to sort of understand like just how strong optimizing actions can be over the course of the game. And the other bot we like to recommend is EXE. And what's fun about EXE is he actually starts with the cannon arm mod equipped, which lets him take strike actions from afar. And he also starts with the Kung Fu Knower equipment, which gives him a huge boost to a strike action. On top of that, his abilities are all about uh, leaning into strike actions and buffing up his dice pool tremendously. So he can be a great pick if you are looking to try and take out some guards. Um, so you have, if you have this full team, if you're playing with like four player, you've got a nice diverse pool of agents to pick from. You've got Access, who's like sort of hacking into the terminals and the network, getting the benefits there. You have Processor, who's making the most out of the optimization mechanic in the game. You have Byte, who can get around relatively unseen and be a lot more sneaky to sort of complete objectives in you know, super secure areas. And then you have EXE if you have that one player who's just looking to maybe engage in some of the combat mechanics for this game. As far as the command module goes, uh, bit is still a good option. Um, though, however, especially if you're playing on a one floor mission, her ability where safe zones are unlocked might not be as impactful since you're not actually gonna be really needing to use those safe zones too often. 
So another um, alternative is Crash as a command module as well. And what's really nice about Crash is her innate ability gives you a bonus to brute forcing locks. So if you are finding yourselves being a bit overwhelmed with how the keypads work in the game and you're not finding enough ways to like optimize utility actions, Crash can be a great boon to the team because it's like, oh, well, all of a sudden we can start brute forcing many of these locks so much easier. And of course, getting those doors open is just gonna help the rest of your team just navigate the map a bit easier as well. So definitely recommend Crash as a starting command module as well. So before you jump into the mission as well, one of the things we definitely, definitely recommend, even with these ones that we have sort of recommended to you, it's still really important to read through the full mission card before assembling your team. Uh, like any classic high story, uh, you always wanna make sure you have the right people for the job or the right bots for the job in this example. Um, like you wouldn't look at the team in Ocean's Eleven and just be like, ah, any of these guys can go, anywhere, we can just mix and match. They all have their unique roles to help them pull off that heist. And that's same with the agents of the 404th as well. So as you're looking through, keep in mind like, all right, what aspects do we need? Does it have us, per perhaps, um, does it have us engaging with the guards a bit more? Are we gonna have to actually shut the captain down like in Operation Overload? Wanna make sure you have a bot that might be pretty good at uh, engaging in strike action. So that's one of the reasons why we recommended EXE. EXE would be a perfect pick for that mission because not only does he have ways to buff up his dice pool tremendously, but with that cannon arm mod, he's guaranteed to be able to have a way to take out the captain from afar. Um, on top of that too, if you look at terminal viscosity, that is a mission where you are gonna routinely be losing power in order to complete the objective because you have to spend power to repair these broken terminals. So it's gonna be important that your team is not made exclusively of low power bank bots. Two of the bots we recommend, both Byte and EXE, are gonna have a power bank capacity of four. So if you're only playing two players, for example, having your team made up exclusively of those two might not be the best call. You might wanna maybe do access and Byte or access and EXE or accessor, access and processor if you're really worried. Um, even if, for instance, you bring Byte on that mission, she's still gonna be a huge benefit to the team because she can go around completing other aspects and benefits that might not be exclusive to the objective, but are still gonna help the team out. So she might be able to go around, access uh, and collect caches, or just open up a bunch of doors, get into places that might have otherwise been heavily guarded. And then of course, you know, if she still needs to, she can still use some of that power to repair terminals. And then you can just make sure the other bots that have a bit more uh, power on standby perhaps have repair. And then they'll be repairing Byte as she is spending that power so she's not ever too low. Uh, but all these things are important to take a look at beforehand. Um, so with those missions, uh, we recommend all four of these bots if you're playing four player. So I know it made it sound like Byte and EXE might not be the best picks for something like Terminal Viscosity, but they definitely can help you out. So if you're playing with four people, I highly recommend using all four of those bots all the same. Um, but just something to consider if you are only gonna be playing with one, two, or even three people, um, kind of take a look at that mission card and then look at the bots we recommended and sort of go, okay, who do we feel like is the least suited for this mission? Um, I do also wanna stress that it is absolutely possible to play all of these missions with any of the bots. Uh, some are just gonna provide more of an inherent challenge um, depending on what the mission asks of you.